Welcome to Teaching a Story. This is Dr. Brenda McMenamin. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm very excited about what God is doing. I want to bring you up to speed, uh, just sharing our testimony. I have been going to the same church for 12 years. I sit under a pastor who loves God, who boldly teaches the truth with grace. And as the years have gone by, um, he began to reach out to me about schooling. He knows I'm a veteran homeschooler and that I teach biblical worldview training. And so I began to send him some resources like Renewing the Mind. We, that's available at FACE.net. I get to teach that class. It's now international. There's so many different countries that God is moving just like he is in America. But we're in a system presently that has kicked God out of the school, kicked Bible out of the school, kicked prayer out of the school, and now we're watching that system collapse. And there's a lot of parents and a lot of pastors that are very concerned. They don't know what to do. And so there's a lot of alternatives online. There's a lot of different curriculum uh, that you can use. It's really good. But what we both happened, I mean, we know it's the Holy Spirit, but we both had the same kind of paradigm on our hearts to create a community of believers who understood the biblical responsibility of parents to disciple their children and to create a way to help them without usurping their responsibility. And so we've created what I was calling a co-op where you meet once a week together, but pastor, my pastor really refined my understanding that it wasn't a co-op because a co-op, you've got different teachers that are cooperating, um, but it's a mentorship. And so I am creating something that isn't really new, but it's a combination of a lot of different things. And I was actually just going to teach high school and I was reaching out to my daughter to ask her to maybe teach the younger children. And she challenged me. She said, mom, why don't you gather us together like you did us children? Because she was homeschooled and now she's homeschooling and teach us the way, you know, the present parents and their children the way that you taught us, you know, my own children, because I had four children and they were spread out 12 years. So the older one was getting into high school and the younger, youngest one was still in diapers and then I had two in between. So I literally had a baby, one in elementary, one in middle and one in high school. And if you're going to try to teach five to seven subjects for those older three it's really hard. So what I began to do is teach kind of in the middle, but assign the high school student extra work on his level and then um, assign the middle school and the younger uh, student that was in elementary level uh, assignments on their level, uh, capitalizing on the trivium. So I'm pro I might be throwing out some terms that you're not familiar with, and I'm going to be explaining these more as I go along. But the trivium basically is that understanding that when they're in elementary school, they do very well at memorizing facts. They like to parrot things. They're learning to read. They're learning to write. So you focus on that and maybe require a sentence from them. So you're really focusing on teaching them how to write a good sentence and understand all the parts of the sentence. Then in the middle school, which is roughly fifth to eighth grade, you're teaching them how to research, you're teaching them logic, you're teaching them how to think. And then in the high school level, ninth to 12th, you're teaching them how to express themselves. This is the rhetoric stage. And so whether it's writing or speaking, so you want to do speech and debate, you want to teach them how to write an excellent essay, whereas in the middle school years, you're teaching them how to write a good paragraph. Okay, so first a sentence in the younger, in the middle, a good paragraph, and the older, an excellent essay. And that sounds so simple. You might say, well, that's too simple, but it's 
alarming how many high school students I get because I do teach high school online and in co-ops over the years I have. And um, there's a lot of high school students that come in and they can't write a good paragraph. They can't write an essay and so you have to help them. And I try to do that one-on-one -on -one because it's not their fault that they haven't been taught or maybe they just need a little more review, a little more experience. So you kind of have to discern where they are and help them forward. But basically by the end of high school, you want them to be able to write well. And there's a gospel purpose for that. And so it's really exciting when you teach them biblical worldview, you encourage them that God's gonna use them for his glory. And so this is the co-op, if you will, mentoring um, experiment that we're doing this year. So I'll be sharing more about that. I just kind of wanted to come on and, and connect with you again, because I know I just disappeared off the face of the earth for a couple weeks there. But the reason I did is that when we shared this concept and the fact that we're building a community to mentor parents, to disciple their children, we were thinking 15 to 20 people would show up and 80, <laughs> 80 came to that meeting. So it took me a long time to, I really was intentional to call everyone, to email everyone, and then to text everyone to let them know I had emailed them. And that really took a lot of time, but it's been fun. It's an adventure. I'm so thrilled with what God's doing. So I'll be back on. I'll give you highlights. If you've got any questions, Email me, reach out to me at the end of teachinghistory.com. There's a, a format where you can sign up for the email list and uh, hear more about what we're doing going forward and get in touch with me that way, okay? Thank you so much. Let's keep praying together. We see that revival is breaking out in the young people, and I'm going to be sharing more. I feel very convicted that we need to learn our heritage, how the founding fathers learned biblically. America is just an example of what God did. He, he's doing this in all these different countries. It's not just America, but America really did capitalize on the biblical worldview and methodology of education. So we need to learn so we can make disciples. So we'll talk more about that in the future. Thank you for joining me and God bless you. Thank you.